Programmatic pipelines are something that's really important when you start to get into the upper echelons of your data pipeline sizes. It can be very difficult to manage such large pipelines without some automation in place. In today's episode, we're gonna show you guys how you too can generate pipelines automatically from configuration. Let's go ahead and take a look. The pipeline that we're going to be automating today is our standard Iris data set. The portion that we're going to be automating is programmatically changing the example test data ratio parameter. What I want to do is I want to have a pipeline that runs with different test data ratios without me having to manually change that test data ratio inside of the parameters YAML config. So in order to create an automated pipeline, we actually need to define it somewhere. And so what I like to do is I actually like to use a configuration file as the def definition for how this automated pipeline is going to be. So let's go ahead and create that configuration right now. I'm going to put it inside of base and I'm just going to name this guy autopipes.yaml. So for this configuration file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually list out a range of values that I want to use for my pipeline. So this will make it very easy if I want to increase the amount of, of test ratios that I would like to apply to my pipelines. So let's go ahead and say uh, a start range. And these are going to be uh, whole numbers here. Data ratio start, data ratio end. Now I'm going to be using the Python range function in order to generate the different pipelines that I want to use. The Python range function, unfortunately, takes whole number integers as its values. So what we're going to be doing is listing the ratios as whole numbers, and then we're going to be dividing by 10 when we actually use the parameters themselves. So now that we have our configuration set up, let's go ahead and pass this configuration into our create pipeline function. This can be done by loading the configuration inside of our project context, inside of the run.py file, and then passing it directly into that create pipelines function as a keyword argument. The reason I'm using a keyword argument is because the create pipelines function by default supports quarks as its parameter. This means that we can extract the auto pipelines configuration by simply opening up the quarks dictionary. Of course, you can change this function to explicitly pass the auto pipes configuration into the create pipelines, but we're just gonna go ahead and take advantage of what's there already. Now, there's gonna be two things that we're gonna be doing here. The first is that we need to pass in our brand new parameters into the pipeline without modifying our configuration. These parameters, of course, are normally going to be pulling from the config loader. But because we don't have these parameters inside of our configuration, then we're not going to be able to get those values. So we're going to inject them in a different way. The next part is we also have to create a new namespace. So when we generate these pipelines, we're going to have outputs pointing to the same places. And because we have outputs pointing to the same places, this is going to actually cause an issue with our Kedro pipeline. And so in order to, to address this, we're going to be using the namespace to make sure that each of the outputs is separate from each other. So in order to get our values into the pipeline, we're going to be injecting it by using an impure node. So this node is actually just going to return the static value, and that static value is going to be our parameter in question. So we have here the range of the target parameters that we wish to use, and we're going to be using currying to create a node that returns our parameter to return and also divides it by 10. Now here's where it gets interesting. We need to add these nodes to a brand new pipeline. So let's go ahead and create a brand new pipeline that we're gonna be using. We're gonna call it the auto pipeline. To that auto pipeline, we're gonna add a new pipeline, which is gonna be a single node pipeline, which includes, of course, our generated param node. And we're gonna be passing in the target param as the parameter to return. The inputs are none, because we are not taking any inputs to this function, and the outputs, we're gonna actually have to be using individual parameter output for every single one of these guys. Let's go ahead and create what I'll call a pipeline key. 
This will identify each of the different pipelines and act as the namespace for the pipeline. We can pass in the target parameter to the pipeline key and make it obvious to see what we're using. Then that output will go directly to the pipeline key. So this will store it in memory as a memory data set. And now we're going to take our original pipeline, our data science and data engineering pipeline, add it to the auto pipeline, and then use the modular pipeline function to modify that data set. So this pipeline function comes from kedro.pipelines, and it's just called pipeline. We're going to go ahead and pass in our data engineering plus data science pipeline. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the namespace. So every time we generate this pipeline, what's going to happen is it's going to use the pipeline key as a prefix for all of the inputs and output data sets from, this, these, from these pipelines here, so from this generated pipeline. And the reason why we're doing that is because Ketro, again, uses DAGs to represent pipelines. That means that you actually cannot have two nodes pointing to the same output. So we actually need to namespace the outputs in order to ensure that each of the outputs is unique. So we're actually using the pipeline key that we generated earlier as that namespace. However, that means that we actually need to change the inputs. So I want all of these pipelines to pull from the same input, and that input is of course going to be our example iris data. The namespace would normally rename that input, but if we actually explicitly state that the example iris data as an input should be always example iris data, then it will not be renamed with the namespace parameter. In our case, the outputs don't necessarily matter because this particular data set will only output to none anyway, since it writes to the standard console uh, at the end. And so we don't actually have to modify the outputs. In your case, if you have a pipeline that does output to some outputs, you of course can use outputs here and then put in the outputs that you wish. Um, and so this is mapping from the previous name, the original name, to a brand new name. The thing that we will change though is the parameters. So the parameters that we're gonna be mapping, of course, is our params example test data ratio. The way that we're gonna be mapping this parameter is we're going to be mapping it to the output of our generated data ratio param node. So that way we're actually going to be pulling from the in-memory data set for that parameter itself. Let's go ahead and write that in. And there you have it. We have our auto pipeline. So we can change the default to auto pipeline. And a good way to test this is actually to use Kedro Viz itself. So let's go ahead and open up Kedro Viz and see what the pipeline now looks like. So here's our original pipeline. And again, this is our Iris data set. We're going to refresh this guy. Et voila, we have our four new pipelines. The reasons why it's four pipelines is because the range function on Python stops right before the end of the range. So we generated pipeline 10, pipeline 20, pipeline 30, and then pipeline 40. And so looking here, we can zoom in and we can see that the namespace has affected all of the data sets that are being output. We have pipeline 10.example train y, pipeline 20.example train y, and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And so now when we run this pipeline, what's going to happen is we're going to get 20 nodes instead of our original 5. And so there you go. You can see all of the outputs coming out in these different pipelines. So I think this will give you guys some ideas on how you can begin to automate your pipelines. Make sure that you use configurations inside of Kedro in order to manage the construction of your pipelines, and then make sure to use your modular pipeline function to manipulate your pipeline such that it will take in the inputs and outputs that you need. Then you can also use these special nodes to return the parameters that you want to replace your parameters. Or of course, you can use your own chosen data sets. And if you made it this far, make sure that you button that like, sub that subscribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.